Would you stand and turn to page 332. 332.
somebody or yell at somebody. You have to have the long arm of the law. <laughs> Uh, 
a couple other preachers, and uh, so I went down there and spent two years, then came back uh, here to uh, Charlestown. Spent the rest of my my days here. But I love the Lord. He's good. He's been good to me. A lot better than I am to him. I've got hip problems. i got all kinds of problems. One doctor told me I had five things that any one of them, if I stopped taking the medicine, I'd die. But I haven't died, and I haven't took all the medicine either. <laughs> so I'm trusting God. Amen. Amen. Seems like I've got a, a book by you, too. Something about a toilet mower or something, ain't it? Or throwing a toilet or something. <laughs> Uh, is that right? Yes, sir. I wrote one. Did you read it? I, yes, I looked at that. That's I haven't read the whole book. One, the flying potty. The flying potty. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, my wife threw a potty chair at me and missed, and it stuck in the wall. And I woke up the next morning. I'd been on a big drug, and uh, I thought, "What is that smell?" And uh, so I went like this, and I hit the shower and got out of the house. <laughs> and uh, when I left, I stopped at a Woolsworth uh, store my, on my way to Kitchen Compact where I worked. And uh, I bought a Bible, King James, just New Testament, uh, for $1.25, and it was the best investment I ever made. So I went to First Baptist first, I said, ah, I know some of these guys that I used to run around with, and I'm not going in there. So I come here, and a uh, uh, junior uh, priest said, uh, because every sin that I'd ever committed, I mean all of them, and I thought, I'm getting out of here. And so they, they gave the invitation. I don't know how he got, it was in the old, old building, I don't know how, how he got back there, but he beat me to the door. And he said, young man, uh, would, are you saved? And I said, no. He said, would you like to be? I said, yeah, somebody just show me how. I went in that room, he took me down the Roman road, and my life has, uh, has been changed ever since then. Amen. Amen. And one of these days, I'm going to see the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Charlie? I thank God for this service this morning. That's the kind of service I like to be in. It's been a good morning. Every good service day. is a good service today, but this morning was super good. The Lord was Jesus here. Jesus was here. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. He's always with us, but sometimes he just shows up in a better way, don't he? <laughs> for yeah. sure. Anybody else tonight? Something good the Lord's did for you. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, have prayer tonight. Get started here. Again, I mentioned next week we're going to be out of town. We're going to the youth convention with some of the youth and some of the other ones. I don't have it on, do it over. I'm sorry. But anyway, next week we'll be going on youth convention, so we won't be here Sunday morning. We will be back Sunday evening, I hope. But again, Josh Aaron will be sitting in for us. So again, come back if you're not going with us <laughs> and be a part of that. Uh, also, we still want to keep uh, praising our veterans today. You veterans, raise your hand up. All our veterans. All the veterans, give them a hand again tonight. We appreciate the service. Appreciate that. Uh, still talking about our Thanksgiving service coming up November the 26th at 6 p.m. And that'll be at the First Baptist here in Charlestown. We'll have three speakers. We'll be having communion. Music will be provided. And looking forward to a good time in the Lord. I know that's a few days after Thanksgiving, but every day ought to be a day of Thanksgiving to the Lord, isn't it? This is the day the Lord has made. We need to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we're also still collecting toller trees uh, for the river crossing during the next few weeks. If you want to bring them with you, we'll be taking them actually to that service and praying and dedicating them. The other churches are collecting them also. And uh, we look forward to, to taking care of that also. <coughs> so again, like I said, keep us in prayer for next week and those that are going with us to Noblesville, Indiana. And uh, we want to keep praying for Lee Seward. I did hear he's home doing, doing better. We're going to keep praying for him. Pam Wiggum with leukemia. Uh, Mike Perry, uh, he was still waiting some tests, so we need to keep him in prayer. Uh, he needs a touch from the Lord, so just pray that things will work out. Uh, Donna Summers, like I said, she got a good report. Donna McDonald's was waiting for a report where she had a scan and some tests last week. Still praying for Gary Higdon with his knee. 
and also Sammy Cundiff for their breathing. Still praying for uh, Bonita Shaw for her and Steve both. I think Steve was having a tough time too, so we need to pray for him. We'll get him back in here on the drums, don't we see? So looking forward to that. And uh, Stella Henry is going to be having some eye surgery coming up uh, in December the 4th. And then Laverne Bodkin has got knee surgery on January the 10th. We're going to keep her in prayer. Uh, still praying for Karen Grayson, for my wife Sandra, for Wayne's wife Janet. And Wayne, you're still doing better? Yes, yes, doing better. Ready to do jumping jacks and everything now? All right, so <laughs> praise God for him. And still praying for all the ones dealing with cancer. Uh, again, it's been asked for us to pray for Leroy Gravy. Also for uh, still praying the heart condition. We also want to pray for Greg Hester as well. Uh, still for Melanie Wire with her heart. Lee Seward, that was a heart situation too. Still praying for revival. Is that all right? Yes. Is that possible today? Yes. Do you believe revival can still happen? Yep. Yeah. Amen. Are we waiting seen for it here? In a while. Huh? I haven't seen one in a while, but I still believe in them. We still need it, don't we? Yes. Absolutely. Jesus Christ, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, isn't He? Yeah. So let's keep praying for that. Uh, let's be praying for Israel, for the peace of Jerusalem, for America's alliance with them. We do have some special unspoken prayer requests. I think they're one that I was thinking of doing pretty good. Uh, still praying for all our shut-ins and for each other. And remember, Je uh, Brenda Jones was asking for prayer this morning. Still praying for Gail and Charlie uh, Mays uh, that was in that car accident, lifting them up in prayer uh, for Eddie and Violet Bodkins. David, Melanie Wire, and for all of our families, we want to pray for each other. Prayer request from you all tonight. Uh, yes, myself, friends, and family, uh, the ministry, wherever it goes, uh, shut ins and shut outs, and for this country and this world to uh, get God back. Amen. Yes. Amen. We need that for sure. Other prayer requests, anybody? Prayer requests out here? Anybody? How many were left lifted hands for yourself or someone else? God sees those hands. As we stand tonight, if anybody would like to be anointed, you can come down here. We take care of that for sure. If not, if you got somebody beside you, take hands. If you don't, just take hands with the Lord and let's agree in prayer tonight. Father God, we just come to you this evening. And we thank you for allowing us to gather in this house tonight. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, caring for us. We thank you most of all for saving our souls. We thank you for taking us from darkness into your precious light. Lord, we thank you for this country, Lord, that we can still gather in a building and still worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to go underground. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we still have that freedom. Help us to use it wisely and not to lose it. Help us, Lord, to stand up for, again, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We do pray for other nations, Lord, that people lose their lives when they become Christians. People end up having to hide in different things because of all the hindrances, Lord. And God, we just pray that, Lord, great things would happen. We pray for Israel and all the things that have been going on over there. Uh, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, of course. Uh, we still pray. Again tonight, Lord, for uh, Lee Seward, that you'll continue to lift him up. I pray for Pam Wiggum with that leukemia. I pray for Mike Perry that was needing some good test results. Still for Missy Crace with a, a broken hip. Also praying for those with knee problems, Lord. We pray that you touch and move upon them. Uh, we pray for those that are waiting for some test results to come back, that they'll be good. I uh, pray for Sandy Cundiff with her breathing problems, that you'll touch and move up on her. Still praying for Bonita and Steve Shaw, that, Lord, you'll lift them up, Father, bring forth a great blessing of the Lord upon them. For David and Dallas Intimate that's had some illnesses back and forth, we pray that you'll touch and move up on them. For Laverne Mike and surgery in January to go well. For Stella Henry with hers in December, uh, we still pray for Karen Grayson. And again, for all those dealing with cancer, those dealing with heart problems, uh, we pray for Melody Wire. We pray, God, that you'll touch her. And uh, again, Lord, for just the needs of your children. For Bobby Sue that was being asked for prayer this morning, that you'll touch and move upon her. 
uh, still praying for, uh, as we was praying for Donna McDonald, she was praying for her granddaughter, Lagan. We pray for her. She's got a thing that's coming Friday with her teeth. I pray that, God, you'll be there for her as well, Father God. Uh, touch and move upon each and every life. And, uh, Father, anoint this time together we have here, and we thank you and praise you for all things, and we ask it all in Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. 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 You may be seated, you ones that do the offerings. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give to the work of the Lord. We pray your blessings upon the offering tonight. Uh, we pray that, again, as we give, those that can, that you'll bless it. For those that have not to give, we pray for your blessings upon that as well. And we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. $600 this past Saturday. So again, we appreciate everybody that helped and participated in that. Those that came as well as those that cooked chili and those that organized, we appreciate all of you. So give everybody a hand for that. And praise God. Right now, my mother's going to come and do a song for us. Uh, give her a hand as she comes to sing for us tonight. Four days late. After the sick, without your help, he will not last. Mary and Martha watch their brother die. They waited for Jesus when he did not come. They wondered why. Well, the death watch was over. He'd been buried four days. Somebody said <coughs> he'll be here soon. The Lord's on his way. Martha ran out to meet him. And then she cried. <coughs> oh Lord, if you'd been here, you could have healed him. And he'd still be alive. You cry. 
cry to the Lord, please come now. But he's not here. Oh, friend, don't be discouraged. For he's still the same. He'll be here soon. He'll roll back your snow. And he'll call out your name. give sacrifices and offerings. You know why? Because there was always a consciousness. There was always a remembrance. There wasn't a perfect sacrifice. Aren't you glad we have one now? Yeah. Amen. We're still asked to do a little bit of that though, aren't we? I think Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the living mercies of God that you present your bodies a living Amen. sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by, re by the renewing of your mind in Christ Jesus. You all believe we're saved by grace through faith, not of works that any man should boast. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Here in uh, chapter 8 of Hebrews, verse 10, He's been talking about the Old Covenant. And we come into this. It says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. 
And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Oh, the Lord, for... What's that say? For all shall know me. From the least to the greatest, the poorest to the richest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I what? Remember no more. Has anybody in here ever sinned? <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> not asking you to brag, but not... We all know that we've all, Brother Charlie was talking about the Romans Road, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Then over in the book of Isaiah it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. But, but it says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Reading on into the next chapter. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, show bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle was called the holiest of all. That holiest of all is where I want to get at it, ain't you? I think we have access to it now, don't we? You remember when Jesus was dying on the cross? And when He gave up the ghost, you remember what happened? It says the veil was rent in two, signifying the way into the Holy of Holies was made for all. We don't have to go to a high priest no more, folks. Amen. We don't have to go looking for the sacrifices of the blood of bulls and goat up, goats and turtle doves and all the things that they may have went after to give sacrifices and offerings. We have a perfect sacrifice. We have a Savior. It says, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna. Remember what that manna was about? Doesn't the Bible say your God shall supply all your needs according to His riches? You remember in the wilderness when they were hungry and started complaining? God began to send forth something called manna. He told them not to collect too much to get just what they needed. As a matter of fact, on Friday night, they wasn't supposed to, you know, that was the only time that they could get a double portion or otherwise it would get worms in it and rot and stink and everything else. But on that night, because the next day was the Sabbath, yeah. and God took care of them. He proved them for 40 years that I'll take care of you. And they had put in that ark manna in there that they had kept. They put that in the rod of Aaron. And again, the commandments, they put them in there. But that manna is to remind us that God supplies you with your every need. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat or drink or what I'm going to clothe myself with. If I'll seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, what does the Lord tell us? I'll supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. Does that mean I can live like a slob? Does that mean that I can go out and never work or never do nothing and just be lazy and honor everything else and expect God to pour out His blessings? If I remember right, the Bible says if a man don't work, he, he has a hard time, don't he? <laughs> he shouldn't eat, but nonetheless, not getting onto that kick tonight. But, but it says, which had the gold center and the ark of the covenant overlaid right about with the gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubim of glory shadowing the mercy seat. Remember those angels that went over top of that mercy seat? Remember that mercy seat? Aren't you glad that we have a mercy seat today? Amen. All oh, His mercy endureth forever, doesn't it? It, it, it says... 
and, it, and over it the cherubims of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Why didn't they go into the second one? Why didn't they just go ahead and slip right through that veil? I mean, all you had to do is just crawl underneath the curtain and get right in there. Man, you want to see the light of glory? There was only one problem with that. You would drop dead. If you got into God's holy presence, I'm talking about the holy God of heaven. If you got into His presence without a covering, you would drop dead. Matter of fact, the high priest would go in there once a year on Yom Kippur. He would go in there and he would bring, first of all, a sacrifice for himself. Remember, they even had things tied around the bottom of his, whatever you call his little dress-like thing, and it wasn't a dress, but it was made like that. And they tie rope on him. You remember they do that? Yeah. And he'd go in there. Why'd they have a rope tied around that old boy? Pull him out. If that boy went in there and didn't do things right, guess what happened? He died. He dropped dead, and the bells would stop ringing. And he would, they'd pull him back out, because they knew better than to go in there. What are you getting at? I'm getting at that God is so holy and so righteous and so perfect, we can't get near Him on our own. Amen. On our own. Because all of us have sinned and all of us are stained, stained with the sins of unrighteousness. And all of us, again, no matter how good or how moral right we may think we are, we haven't ever met the criteria of being perfect except through Jesus Christ. It, it says, but into the second went the high priest alone once Every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signified that the way, in, excuse me, the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect. You mean that priest wasn't perfect? <laughs> Those old boys that helped around there, the other ones, they weren't perfect? Isn't that what you got to go to as a priest to get forgiveness? <laughs> Some people are still looking at that, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Kissing a ring and a few other things, aren't they? I'm not down on people for the religion, but that's all it is. Is a religion you need, we need, we have, and I hope we all have a religion that has got a relationship with Jesus Christ. Religion just means I put the same shoe in the same foot every day. I do something over because it's the right way to do it. I practice in the, the way to do things. But a relationship says that I can come to God because He first came to me. He commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He made a way of escape. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall what? Be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that, again, we don't have to go through all the things that they went through? Do you think that they did all the things right all the time? How many times did Israel backslide on God? I'm talking about went away from God and God had to judge them. Look how many times that, that Israel, you know, 40 years in the wilderness because they wouldn't trust Him for 40 days. He turned them over to Babylon. He did other things and He turned them over. Does that mean God didn't love Amen. those people? That meant God was trying to get them their attention because He did love them. He wanted them to get right in His sight. And to be pre prepared for eternity, praise God. Which was the figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the surface perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinance imposed on him until the time of reformation. 
until God did a little house cleaning. How did He do that? He got you to be right. He got you to quit sinning. He got you to quit drinking and smoking and cussing. He got you all wrapped up in perfectness. You remember when you was lost? And again, I don't know how lost some of you were. I felt like I've been lost pretty good when I was lost. But at the same time, if you tuck and quit one thing, you pick up something else. You quit smoking, you start drinking. You quit drinking, you start doing something else or whatever. There was always leading to something else. And the only way that you could ever get that straightened out was when Jesus Christ came into your heart and life. He's better than lifesavers. <laughs> Amen. You ain't got enough of them lifesavers to clean it up like He did, did you? Actually, He is our lifesaver, isn't He? He is the one that takes away the darkness and brings in the amazing light of Jesus Christ. Changes our life from darkness into the, the precious light of His glory. It, it, it says... We stood only in meats and drinks and divers worships and carnal orders imposed on them until the time of Reformation. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and a more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. You know, we were reading in our Sunday school class this morning. They got upset with Jesus because He made a statement. He said, if you tear this tabernacle down, I'll rebuild it in three days. And they were ready. That was what they basically crucified him over. They basically got their witnesses to come together. They said all kinds of other lies about him, trying to get him to, you know, be thrown on a cross. But when they said, you know, this man says that in three days this tabernacle will be destroyed. Or he'll, this tabernacle will be destroyed and then in three days I'll raise it up again. And they thought he was talking about that wonderful, magnificent building. And he was talking about a wonderful, magnificent building, but he was talking about his body. He was talking about his temple. His body was going to be broken. His body was going to be bruised. His body was going to be chastised. His body was going to be given stripes. And then after three days... After three days, he was going to be raised again. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. It says, But Christ, being come a high priest of good things, to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood. What can wash away our sins? Amen. Nothing, but Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Aren't you glad that precious blood was shed for each and every one of us? You know, I believe if you was the only pers person that ever lived, that Jesus still would have shed His blood for you. That Jesus would have still made a way. I mean, he started out with one anyway, didn't he? Adam. I mean, he had him in a perfect scenario until the fall of the garden. He had to bring him, again, the admatic nature back. But by his own blood, he entered him once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for who? For us. Who the Son sets free is free indeed, aren't we? For if the blood of bulls and of goats, and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled, the unclean sanctified to the purity of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience? How's your conscience tonight? Have you got a clean conscience? Let me ask you this question. Is everything well between you and Jesus? Have we got our own thing going on with Him? More than likely on a Sunday night, we all do. <laughs> but at the same time, do we got our life settled with Him each and every day? It says, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. 
Again, when we were talking about Ephesians there earlier, you're saved by grace through faith, not of works lest any man should boast, for you are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Good works don't save you, but if you get saved, good works will follow you. Yeah. Yeah. Good works won't get you right with God, but if you're right with God, good works will follow. We were talking about this morning over in the book of Luke, you remember we talked about those four men that took their buddy to the house that Jesus was in and, and it was so packed out they couldn't get nobody else in there and they had to climb on the roof and rip the ceiling apart. Amen. And let him down. And you remember what we were talking about? When Jesus saw their faith, He saw what they were doing. Somewhere along the line, we might have to rip a roof off sometime. I'm not talking about a literal physical roof, but I'm talking about the roofs of problems in our life, the roof of sins, the roof of uh, things that get in our way. It might be the roof of sickness and our ailments or whatever you're going through. We got to get to Jesus some way. We got to get to the Lord. We were talking about that this morning, and, and remember. It said it was noised abroad. I love that part. It was noised abroad that he was in the house. That's what we need, isn't it? Noised abroad that Jesus is in the house. They couldn't get nobody else. Like I say, if we had this place packed out, still, if it wasn't for the right reason, it wouldn't make no difference, would it? Our house is right here, isn't it? Our body. Isn't that the tent or the house of the Holy Ghost? Isn't that where He resides at? He resides... You know, we, we made the point that greater work shall we do because He goes to the Father and sends back the Comforter. Again, that don't mean that you or me are going to do one particular item more than Jesus could do. It means that I can be in one place and you can be another place. You can be another place. You can be another place. You can be. We can all be in different places at the same time. And God is still working in every one of us, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't He talk about us being the hands and the feet and the different parts of the body? You can't say one's better than the other. We need every part of the body, don't we? Yeah. We need to work together for the the working of the Holy Ghost working in us. Verse 15 says, And for this cause He is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redeem, redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. When do you receive an inheritance? After somebody's gone, right? Mm -hmm. well, what's he talking about an inheritance? For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after man or dead, otherwise it is no more, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins. And without the shedding of blood there is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these. But, heavenly, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands which are of which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Isn't He right there at the right hand of God making intercession for each and every one of us? When we pray to the Father in the Son's name, doesn't He hear each and every one of us? Isn't He pleading for our cause already? He did that all the way through. 
but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hmm. No man took his life, did they? Remember Pontius Pilate? Don't you know that I got power to set you free or to have you free? He said, no. No, I, I could call down legions of angels. It's not a big deal. No. I'm laying down my life, he's saying. In verse 27, that's a powerful verse. It says, And as it is appointed unto man wants to die. How many times have you heard the only two things that you can't get out of is death and taxes? They lied. People get out of taxes all the time. Yeah. People cheat and mess around that. There's one thing you're not going to cheat. There's one thing you're not going to lie out of and that's death. Right. Uh, again, like I say, that I know that's a, a statement people have made for a long time, but they're right about one of them. You definitely won't get out of that. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We shall see Jesus. Shall we? Amen. He's coming back in the clouds of glory one of these days. Read on into the 10th chapter if you don't mind here tonight. I won't keep us all night. But it says, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers therein too perfect. Again, I know that we within ourselves can never be perfect. But we can be perfect through the one that lives in us, can't we? Doesn't the Bible say greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world? Praise God. Yeah. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. They would do that on Yom Kippur every year. We don't have to focus on a certain day to get our sins washed away, do we? Except one. And that's the day we give our heart and life to Jesus Christ. Do you remember the day the Lord saved you? Do you remember when you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, repenting of your sins, and by faith receive Him as your Lord and Savior? It wasn't some kind of, you know, we, we try to say in the morning, Sunday mornings a lot of times for the YouTube watchers and the different ones, a, a sinner's prayer. You know, it's not about how eloquent or how long or how big of a prayer we can make. It's about simply saying, I need a Savior. I'm a lost sinner and I need a Savior to Amen. set me free. I need to be changed, praise God. And like I say, if nothing else, cry out to the Lord and say, Jesus, save me. Some people don't have a lot of time to, to play around with things. You know, if you're dying in a car accident or something else, you don't know the very moment or the hour. And I wouldn't want to toy around with it like that anyway, would you? No. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh in the world, he saith, and we've shared this many times during communion, sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. You know, we have to have repentance and not penitence. You can't just keep paying for your sins. They've got to be paid for in full, don't they? I never was good enough to be good with God, was you? I never was right enough to get things right with God. That's why, again, we all have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that's what the world needs to know? Amen. They need to know that, no, I can't get my life straightened out on my, not my own. No, I can't get my sins straightened out in my own power. No, I can't quit this, quit that, and quit whatever else. 
your offenses or whatever your transgressions may be, but I can do one thing. And I can come boldly before the throne of God through His Son Jesus Christ and simply say, Lord, I need to change. I'm a mess and I need to fix up. Restoration. Restoring something. I got an old glider the other day. I've been looking for one. Come to find out one of my friends had one. Man, that thing is rusty and as rotten as it can get. But it still works. It's still got all the parts. And you know what I plan on doing with that thing? I plan on fixing it up. I may have to have some help because there's some things I don't know how to do. I'm talking about fabricating metal. Some of it's probably, some of it's almost gone. But you know what? Just like fabricating that thing over again, I know somebody that can fabricate us over again, don't you? Aren't you glad that He's the potter and we're the clay? Aren't you glad that He can take something that nobody knows how to restore and He can make it brand new? Aren't you glad that, again, you know, when everybody else gives up on that piece of pot, you know, they throw it away, God can take that pottery and make something brand new out of it? He can make you, He can make me. Aren't you glad Jesus saved your soul? Aren't you glad that Jesus took out that old man and put a new man into you? Made you something different. Made you something worth going to heaven for. And it wasn't because we did something right or we did something better or good. It's because we come to Jesus Christ and called upon His name. Praise God. Again, Sacrifice and offerings, I would not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the value of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above what he said, sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings, and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure there, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Once for all. It's a done deal. You trusted in the Lord Jesus tonight? I believe we are here tonight. You trust Him all the way through the end, right? He that began a good work in you, He will finish it until the time He comes again. You believe that? you believe that the time is drawing near for the Lord to come back? I know we talk about the signs and everything that's going on around us. You know, uh, we were talking about that song this morning, Day Star, Shine Right On Me. Let me be a reflection of you, Lord. This world needs us to be His reflection, don't it? They need to see Jesus, the hope of glory in us. They need to see something more than just churchgoers and religious people that do things that, because they have to. They need to see that I serve a risen Savior and not a dead religion. I've got more than just going through the formalities. I've got a relationship with the Son of God. you believe that tonight? Yeah. You've got to believe that for yourself, each and every one of us individually. Praise God. Let's close out here tonight. It's a done deal. It's taken care of. One more thing before we close. Verse 22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil consciousness and our body washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For He is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to do what? To provoke into love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We need to come together to build each other up, don't we? We need to come together to exhort each other to love one another. Let's stand tonight if you'd like. We're going to close in prayer. If you have any needs here before you leave, you're welcome to the altar anytime. But at the same time, we're just going to close at this time. And let's pray to be better witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. I know I need to be a better witness. How about you tonight? 
I want to be something that other people can see Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'm trying to pass out a few tracks once in a while, and even with the, the panhandlers trying to throw them a dollar or two just so they'll take it sometime. But uh, you got to have love to get people to accept anything, don't you? But Father God, we thank You for this time here tonight. We thank You for Your Word. It's forever settled in heaven and earth. We thank You, Lord, that we don't have to go to a high priest. We don't have to go, I'm talking about of the worldly ordinance, but if we've got a high priest with Christ Jesus our Lord, that again, it's a done deal that we can come before You, Lord, and You're here for us, Lord. We don't have to keep giving uh, turtle doves and calves and all the different things that were given in the Old Testament but it's done through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, touch and minister to every one of our hearts and lives. Help us all to be a better witness for Christ. Help us, Lord, to show Your love to a lost and dying world. And help us to be in prayer to see that revival that we're wanting to see, to see that move of the Holy Spirit we're looking for and desiring. Help us all to come into Your presence. Help us to come into the place where the Holy of Holies is at in our lives today. And Father, may your, your power and your anointing be upon all of us, Lord. Yeah. Not just here in this pulpit, but in all of us, wherever we go. Lord, may people feel Jesus in us and around us and want what we have. And I ask God your touch upon us, your safety as we go home in the dark tonight. May we be the light of it. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Remember, come back and be with us Wednesday night. 7 o'clock for Bible study. Be praying for us with the youth as we go up there to Noblesville this weekend. And again, be praying for Brother Josh who will be sharing this Sunday. Have a good evening. God bless.